I'm going to actually just demo the application this morning, and then Todd and Nicole are going to go into a lot more detail about how this was done. So I'm going to alt tab over into um, an in private browser in Microsoft Edge into one of our demo environments here. And today I'm actually Katie Jordan. 2020 means I get to pick a new alias to present as. Last year was Megan. This year is I'm going back to Katie. Um, and you'll see if you're familiar with Microsoft Teams that I've kind of hidden a bunch of teams that are in this developer environment just to highlight that today we're talking about the Contoso board team. And we have these quarterly meetings that we put together and all of our board members have the ability to come in here and chat and discuss things within within the environment. And we can obviously go and add new members to the board through the standard things that happen in Teams. But what we've actually built is a tab. Um, we've called this app application a the meetings capture application. And what it allows me to do is within the context of this particular Microsoft team, and in particular, this particular channel of a team, we can go and create meetings um, that are in the future with agendas, um, with people attending, um, as well as pre-read documents, um, and even tasks that we can create to associate with people um, around those pre-reads. And then when the meeting is actually live, we can capture the notes of the meetings, uh, uh, date attachments, create new tasks and actions as we have discussions in the meetings, and then afterwards actually kind of publish that meeting and sign off if you want to be that official like a lot of board meetings or committee meetings or governance council meetings do. So just to give you an idea about what we're doing here, when we create the meeting, um, I'm actually going to do one just as in context of what we're doing today, which is the community call uh, for February uh, discussion. And you can see that it's already added me as an attendee, but it's also added um, Elisa here, who is part of the Contoso board and has also been part of meetings in the past that I've worked on with that particular person. Now I can go in here and add um, a lot of other people in, and it's using a people picker here um, to make those suggestions. So I can go and add Todd, who's in the call here, and add him in as an attendee. And you can see that it's doing nice little simple things like adding um, their photos that are stored within the profiles in Microsoft 365. Now, in addition to that, we can say that although my next community call meeting is in February the 4th, I can actually go in and say, well, I do want to kind of start this discussion early. So I'm going to look for a time for 30 minutes on the 13th of the January for these three people. And when you run find meeting times, what that's actually doing is running the get schedule in the background of the graph. And I can go in here and pick when everyone's available. And you can see there at 9.30 that not everyone is available to attend. So I'm going to pick that 10 to 10.30 time frame. And so we're going to review uh, content from the Jan, the Jan call. Um, we're going to discuss potential speakers here. And then we're going to uh, talk about content from engineering that we want to add. And obviously, I can go in and add new attendees. And maybe there's some pre-reading before this meeting. Maybe I have already got a list of potential Microsoft community call members that I've been drafting in a Word document. And I can click Save. Now, what that's obviously going to do is go create that meeting. It's going to send meeting invites to everyone, and it'll kind of do a nice summary of all of those events. So if I come over into um, Katie's calendar here, you'll see that there's existing ones that have been summarized where um, it's put those in. And if I go over onto the calendar, um, it will come through here that I've got one on the, this one is one I just created. And you can see that if I double click on it, it shows me all the members. It shows that not everyone's responded yet. I have automatically responded because I've created this meeting. And so it kind of integrates nicely with that calendar. And then when it comes to um, wanting to launch that uh, and, and pr preview that meeting, if I just click there, it's going to tell me as I'm running this, as the note taker within that meeting, that Katie, which is me, has approved it. Aly Alyssa and Todd have not accepted the meeting, so maybe they might not turn up. Shows me the agenda we initially had as well as those links to those pre-read documents we wanted. And then during the call, maybe we've got some notes, and I'm just going to throw in some nice lorem ipsum here for the sake of not seeing me type too much. And I can basically save those meetings at any point and keep resaving those as I go as a note taker. But I can also go through and add tasks. Now, I can go and create tasks that say uh, I need to catch up with um, new speakers for March. 
And I'm going to assign that to um, Alyssa because Alyssa is the one that normally does this. And then I'm going to make that as a deadline for the 20th and add that task. And under the covers, what that's doing is it's actually creating that planner task inside of a plan within the channel for this quarterly meeting. So if I go into my Microsoft to do as Alyssa, or I go into planner as Alyssa, uh, essentially I'm going to see all those tasks showing up within within my experience. Now, after the meeting's done, maybe I want to like wrap that up. Maybe I've got some final notes I need to do straight after the meeting or like at the end of the day, I go back and I add some more notes because I have my day full stacked of meetings. Is that Then I can publish that meeting. Um, and so what I can do here is when I click publish, that's going to go away and wrap all that up and capture it um, and then summarize those notes um, into an email form and send those to all of the attendees. Um, this means that if someone needs to shoot this to other people, if they weren't in the meeting but want to hear, see the notes, they can. Um, but also the real benefit of this is, is the amount of times like I'm on a bunch of different kind of governance teams here and V teams. If I want to find previous meetings. I just go to the channel where that V team actually discusses things and I go to the meeting capture and I can see the history of all those meetings and go review the meeting minute notes from it. Um, and so this is super useful. Um, it, it is consistent. So if your whole organization use this approach, um, if you get invited to a new V team, you know where to go to look to see all those previous meetings and all the notes. And so if I jump back over to Outlook here and went into Katie's mail here, you'll see that that community call for February it sent the email. We've got a nice standardized format here. Shows the attendees at the meeting. It shows what the agenda was. It shows the notes that we're taking during the meeting. But it also shows all the different tasks that were given and, and, and what's still outstanding. So because those people didn't do the pre-reading of that document that we attached, those tasks are still open, but you could go in there and mark those as closed. And when you just publish the, the uh, meeting, it wouldn't send those through. And we've done nice things like adding the fact that when you click on this, what we're actually doing is taking advantage of OneNote, which obviously we've created the notebook for that channel within the files section of Teams. And for every meeting that gets basically published, we go and create the OneNote notebook page for those. And so if you wanted to have OneNote on your phone or OneNote on your desktop, um, you could go and basically open this OneNote page in your application and have that on the go with you. Um, and again, consistency, all of the meeting minutes will all be there underneath these different notebooks mapped to uh, the team and the channel, which would essentially be um, a section within the OneNote. And then every single meeting here would, uh, would then be the OneNote pages that get created. So we're leveraging a lot of different aspects of the Microsoft 365 platform here to um, work with a common scenario that people do within companies to um, run with meetings within the context of members of a team. So um, hopefully that gives you a good idea about what we've built. 